This mini lesson is going to look at calculating the surface area and volume for a right cone. Now, a right circular cone is a three-dimensional object that has a circular base and a curved sur surface. The height of the cone is a perpendicular distance from the apex to the base, the same as you had seen in um, a tetrahedron, a square pyramid, and a rectangular pyramid. The slant height of the cone is the shortest distance on the curved surface between the apex and a point on the circumference of the base. So what does that mean? What's it look like? Well, our apex, just to remind you, is this point right up here at the top. Our slant height is referring to this distance. So our slant height, oops, is here. Our perpendicular height that we have is referring to in here. And then we're looking at this. So when we're looking at calculating the surface area and the volume, sometimes we'll need the slant height, sometimes we'll need the perpendicular height. And as we had seen when we were studying the pyramids, we will also find that sometimes I'm given the perpendicular height, but I need the slant height. So I'm going to have to calculate the slant height. So we're going to look at a little bit more in depth at this. Now the surface area of a right, um, I have a right pyramid, but I mean a right cone, is the sum of the areas of the curved surface and the base. So just so you know, I mean a right cone. The lateral area is the area of the curved surface, not including the base. So again, we're looking at, can you distinguish between surface area and lateral area? And if you're looking at design and you're putting one of these into your mini putts that you are designing, perhaps part of what you're having to calculate, you're not going to have a base to it. Right? It's just going to set right on your golf hole. Well, then you don't have to include that as part of this, that surface area. You may wish to, it might be part of that design that you have it, and some of it it may not be. Here is the net for the surface area. So this is what it would look like. You have a little circle. So we have a circle here. This is the base of our cone. And then we have the curved surface. So this creates the curved surface. And what I'd like for you to note is that this distance that we have right here, right off of this sector, that is created by the circumference of the base because it lies around that base. Now, because that is the circumference, Right? That's where we're looking at this two, this pi r is coming into play. Now, this is the formula to calculate the surface area of a cone. It's a little bit more in depth than we had seen with the others, where it was having just to see the surface area of the sides. Well, because this is really a sector of a bigger circle, then that's a little bit more in depth. So for those of you that just want to know what's the formula, how do I use it, here's your formula. I'm going to show you how to use it. Um, this is the area of our base. So this is the area of our blue circle that we have down here. So this is this area. This value, pi rs, is how we calculate the surface area of that curved surface. And we just add those two together. So this is our formula. Now I want to expand a little bit on the formula because as math students, we need to learn where do these things come from? Well, so you know, this area that I have here, I'll put it in again, um, color it in. The area of this curved surface is really a sector of the entire um, circle that we might have. Oops, that, I lost my color. Let's put that back on. So this is a sector of this entire circle. We're only going to see part of it. We're only using part of it to create our cone. So this is proportional to the entire circle that this creates. And if we look at some of this information, 
this value here is what we're going to call the arc length. Now we know that that arc length is equivalent to the circumference of our base. And so if we are looking at our information that we have, this is the radius that we have for our base. We might have a diameter, but we can calculate the radius. And in all of this information, this value that we have here, that's our slant height for our cone. But what you'll notice is it's not just the slant height for our cone, it's the radius of this larger circle that we have. So this information we're going to use to show you how do we calculate this? Where do these calculations come from? All right, so R is the radius of our base. S, which is our slant height for our cone, is the radius of our lateral circle. All right, so it might be the lateral part of our cone, but it creates this larger circle. So when we're looking at this, we have what's called proportional reasoning. So we know that the area of a sector divided by its arc length. So that's saying what's shaded here in green, okay, divided by the value on the outside of what's shaded in green, this part, which is our arc length, that is equal to the, in, the area of the entire circle I'll just say large circle, divided by circumference of the large circle. All right, so how do we find that area that, of the sector? Well, let's look at what we have. Our arc length is actually, we know the same as the circumference of the base. So that is 2 pi r. The area of the large circle is pi s squared, where s is our slant height. And the circumference of that is 2 pi s. So the area of the sector would be equal to 2 pi r times pi s squared, it's a bad looking pi, divided by 2 pi s. Now let's simplify that. So we know, okay, we'll, we're dividing both sides by, or sorry, we're dividing by 2. So there's a 2 in the numerator, a 2 in the denominator, so they divide out to give me 1. Here's pi divides by pi to give me 1. I have an s squared in the numerator and an s in the denominator, so I divide by s and I have s. So this shows me that the area of the sector is equal to pi r s, which is what we had in the formula. But I thought I'd show you where does that one come from. Okay, so we know our formula for surface area. So our surface area is pi r s plus pi r squared. Okay, now let's look at what we have. We have the slant height. Okay, so that's our s value. So this is our s. We have our radius. Actually, we have the diameter. We can calculate the radius. Radius is half of our diameter, so this is 10 centimeters. So let's look at surface area. Surface area is equal to pi r s plus pi r squared. So this is 250 pi plus 100 pi. 
350 pi and you might be wondering well why am I not just using pi button it's just I've been doing that part of my head so that was easier when we do calculate pi you need to use the number that's stored in your calculator 3.14 is not going to cut it all right so your calculator probably has 10 decimal places we're going to have that full value of pi. So if you're wanting the answers that are in the back of the book, you're wanting the answers that I'm looking at, I do not want to have the approximation of 3.14. I want you to have the approximation to 10 decimal places. So every calculator should have a pi button. And so you're going to look for your pi button on your calculator. Some of you may need to use your second function to, to get to that. So when we put in 350, uh, times pi, we'll actually get this number, 0. 0.557 or something like that. But when we're actually doing the rounding, your textbook will tell you how to round. If I give you a quiz, I'll tell you how to round. But when we're dealing with science, significant digits come into play. And this is way more digits than we need. I tend to use this as a rule of thumb in math because Mr. Ramsey and Mrs. Lupa, like they'll slap our fingers, these math, us math teachers, because we don't really care about our significant digits so much and science that they do. But we're wanting to know that you know how to calculate. But if I have everything to a ones unit, there's no decimal places, I should round to that ones unit. If I have a decimal place, then I would put that in. In science, that's different. We're going to look at uh, significant digits, accuracy, and precision. So if I'm looking at this, this is going to round up the 9 rounds to a 10, which means it goes up to this other 9, and it rounds to a 10. So really what I would have is this value. Now, we have to look at our units. We're looking at centimeters, but we're finding area, so it's squared. Okay, so that's going to give you a value um, that's approximate. I want to show you what happens, though, when we're rounding. It's going to affect other numbers because of the 9. So there's the surface area of this cone. Well, let's look at this question. We want to find the surface area of this right cone, but what's the problem? We don't have the slant height. So we need to find the slant height. So let's look at that. So here is 15. This says the diameter is 16, so we want to have the radius, which is 8. And we're looking for this value for our slant height. So we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. That's our, that's our um, hypotenuse, isn't it? So that's equal to the square root of the sums of the squares of the other two sides. And I think I played with some nice numbers. So the square root of 289 which gives me a slant height of 17 centimeters. All right, so this is going to give me 17 centimeters. Now, do I have enough information to find my surface area? Surface area is pi r s plus pi r squared. So as long as I have my slant height, I've got surface area. R, in this case, is 8. Uh, S is 17. Eight times 17 is 136 pi plus 64 pi. And that gives me 200 pi. Now, if you're just calculating the pi automatically using your calculator, that's fine. But we should all get 628 centimeters squared for the surface area of our cone. So when we're looking at surface area, sometimes we'll have the slant height, then it makes it easy. Sometimes I have the perpendicular height, and I'm going to have to calculate the slant height. For volume, just like with our pyramids, we're going to find we want the perpendicular height. And just like we had with our pyramids, it's one third the area of the base times the height. But remember, the area of our base we have a circle, so it's pi r squared. Okay, so let's calculate the volume. One third pi r squared, in this case, this is 9 squared, times 24. When I put all this uh, 
into the calculator, right? So I take uh, pi times 9 squared times 24 divided by 3. I get, I did it this way first, so it doesn't matter. And then I got 2,036. My units are in inches, but it is cubic because we're kind of finding the volume. We're trying to find the volume. Okay. Find the volume of right cone with a diameter of 10. So if my diameter is 10, then that tells me that my radius is 5. My slant height is 13, and these are in inches. But I'm trying to find volume. If I'm trying to find volume, I need my perpendicular height. Well, here's my Pythagorean theorem at work. So my height is the square root of 13 squared minus 5 squared. So that's the square root of 144. Again, we have some nice numbers today to work with. So my perpendicular height is 12. So this is 12 inches. Volume, one third. Pi r squared, h. So r is 5, so r squared is 25, and h is 12. We put this all into our calculator and we get 314 inches cubed. So we've been able to find the volume of our cone. And that concludes our lesson on a right cone.